All right, the recording's going. Um, I don't know. Oh, okay. Are you doing well, the welcome or starting? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I can do it too. Um, uh, welcome to our uh, second in a series of three workshops for, uh, related to special construction, or basically we can interpret that as uh, fiber to your library and all things you need in order for it to uh, work correctly in your library. Um, this is, the, like I said, the second of three. And today we're focused on special construction um, solely for the most part. And so uh, we're, we also, I just want to mention, if you've seen this before, we're going to try a different tactic here. We're kind of walking through this as if you were the library director and you've just watched this webinar and you're ready to get going and then talking about what uh, what are the sequence of things that will be happening? So you are going to see um, Krista come on several times to talk about um, E-rate, and of course this is Krista Porter, and um, um, and she is our E-rate expert. And then we might have a new face for you, which is Becca Kingry, who is from the OCIO, and she will be talking uh, about something called Network Nebraska a little bit later on. So without a I think we'll get started. Do you want to introduce yourself to Holly? Oh, oh, I guess so. There I am at the bottom. <laughs> um, I'm Holly Wolt, and I've been uh, working with uh, um, broadband for faster speed to libraries, um, competency of library directors related to technology, and um, then support with working with now bringing fiber to the library. Uh, the Library Commission has just joined in with a um, big uh, grant um, that um, is the Digital Equity uh, Act grant, planning grant for that, and the Library Commission is on the committee, or I mean, a, a partner in that, and also um, I'm going to be working, separating some of my time to work on that particular project too. So I'm really looking forward to that because I do a lot with the infrastructure side of it, and now I'm going to be moving also to do some things that actually relate to community and engagement of community um, in digital equity. So let's go. So. Um, so when we're talking about special construction, we want to know what does it offer our Nebraska public libraries? Well, it's um, it's great because I would start um, a little nonconformity. We start at the very bottom here with the discounts for fiber insulation for your library, public library. And I think Crystal will probably mention that uh, we have, what, 70% is the average um, discount from E-rate. And if you don't know what E-rate is, it's a federal program that is based, well, I guess maybe Krista, you want to give a talk on that? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, E-rate is a um, federal program that gives discounts to schools and libraries, um, giving discounts on their internet service. So, and any equipment that you might need to make that internet service work inside your library. Um, and I was actually just looking to see, you're talking about the discount. Uh, this current 80. year that we're in, in 2022, actually the average discount of Nebraska Library Supply was 74%. Woo! So yeah. it's gone up. So uh, you'll want to check with us, or um, if you don't know, um, we can let you know um, if what your discount is at your library. Um, just... Um, put it in the uh, chat box or ask about it at some point that, you know, yeah, all public you know. libraries in Nebraska are eligible. All schools are eligible and do it with the help of um, the Department of Education and CIO's office. Uh, I, uh, yeah. So anyway, the, the special construction is the eligible costs for, uh, and, and it, you think about it, it's building, it's bringing fiber to the library. It's the construction of the network facilities, the design and engineering, and project management to make that happen. So this this is the cost that is covered. So that's from wherever the node is out there, where the fiber is coming from, to the wall where you tell it to in your RFP, uh, it, where the fiber comes into the building. So that's, uh, but the best part is of course, is, as Krista was mentioning, is the discounts that are available for the library uh, to receive. And then the other part about that is you're also bringing fiber potentially into a community that does not have fiber 
um, in it at all. And then from the point of the library, you're able to distribute to other downtown, if you're downtown, the businesses or on into residential areas. So we have, um, first off, the you have uh, opportunity to make some choices or you can do both. We have special construction projects that can be initiated by the library or by Network Nebraska is, and that's why Becca is here to talk about that. And you can do both and, um, but as, it states in the last bullet, there are options, the options are, there are pros and cons for both options. So for the library. So if uh, I'm gonna let Becca go forward. All right, and as they said, I am Becca Kingery. Previously, you might've seen Tom Rolfus up here. Uh, he has moved on to the NTIA. So I took his, I was his replacement. So let's talk a little bit about um, the differences between going with Network Nebraska and filing the 470 on your own and kind of trying to do this on your own. The beautiful thing about it is you don't need to decide today if you want to utilize Network Nebraska or do it on your own. Just know that the primary thing for us is that you're under no obligation. If we go out and if we take these steps for you and then you decide, nope, I'd rather do this on my own, you can do that. The only thing that you do need to know is that you probably need to start right away. Either way, you either need to notify us or kind of start to work with your 470. So if a library is going to do this on their own, they would need to utilize the Form 470, which is handled through USAC, which they kind of oversee the E-rate program for the FCC. That would be filed by the local library. To qualify for special construction, you need to have these line items on your RFP that designated costs associated with construction of network facilities, design and engineering, and project management. Um, for it to be considered a valid bid, there needs to be a number in at least one of those line items. It doesn't have to be all three, but it has to be in at least one. The difference for Network Nebraska is essentially we'll do that on your behalf. Um, we will submit it as part of our state RFP process. That's I'm getting so close to finalizing right now. Um, so we just need to know some basic information. How, what are the speeds you want us to look at? Who is the contact? And where specifically would the fiber be going into? Next slide. The one of the important things that you need to note is there's going to be some differences in the billing. So it's going to look a little bit different. Traditionally, you go to your ISP, you say, I want fiber built in, or you know, they successfully potentially win your own the, the bid or the RFP initialized by the local library. And they're gonna win, you're gonna submit a, an order, and then you're gonna get an invoice for your upfront costs, which would be the E-rate discount. And as we stated, the average is about 74. So, you know, if you're 70, you're gonna get you're gonna get a cost associated with that remaining 10% of that invoice. If it's 80 or higher, you won't you won't be charged for that build out fee. But then you will start to get that monthly reoccurring cost for at least the 100 megabits per, uh, per second service. Now it's lumped into one payment. When you look at Network Nebraska, it's that same 20% or the E-rate discount plus the 20%, whatever is remaining for your build out, plus we charge or we're charged by that internet service provider, whoever wins the bid for the transport portion of your bill, we would charge you the difference back. And that's again gonna be for that 100 megabits per second service. Plus there is a Network Nebraska participation fee. Now this ranges anywhere from $56 for our smallest, our very smallest members to $225 a month. And that fee goes into other benefits that we'll talk about later, like access to the University Network Engineers, DDoS protection, um, and just kind of our backbone services. Yeah. In, addition, um, in addition to that, we have the Network Nebraska Interregional Transport Fee, and then the separate charge for your internet service. The only, the, the thing I want libraries to understand is over here where we've got the ISP is billing you one invoice, all of those same fees excluding the participation fee are still just bundled into one price. We bundle, we separate it out, and that will actually be it could be beneficial for libraries who don't want to filter later. And we'll talk about that in an upcoming slide. 
And I want to mention here when we were talking about the discounts, you get a discount on that fiber build, but you also receive that E-rate discount on the, the second item on both of these, the monthly recurring costs too. Yes. So it'll be whatever that cost is, we'll have your discount from E-rate um, applied to that. So you'd only, like, if your rate discount rate was 70%, you'd only pay 30% of the full cost. Exactly. Yes. Thank you for that, Krista. There we go. All right, and now let's talk about the pros and cons of both. Um, the pro, overall, the monthly costs might be lower than Network Nebraska, primarily because we're not charging. You're not, there's no participation fee. There's no dues associated with membership. You get to work directly with your service provider, and in some local towns or in some smaller, more rural communities, that's a great thing. You know your service provider by first name, and you already have that report built with them. One of the cons is, the local e-rate file or the e-rate filing does fall on the local library it is your responsibility so you're going to fill out your forms 471 you're going to either you're going to fill out your form 470 and if you utilize the bare method you're going to fill out the form 472 at the end if there are any service disruptions um, that might not be something you discover until you come into work at 10 a.m on a thursday and then you realize that you've got an internet outage and then one of the last ones is that SIPA content filtering is actually required for you to participate in E-rate if you are utilizing this, if you're doing this on your own. So when we jump over to Network Nebraska, we handle the E-rate services on our end. So we will have you initially initialize a 471 because that lets us know what speed you want to order off based off the RFP pricing. But then from there, we take care of everything else. Um, we also provide that network manage that's built into that participation fee that additional 56 to 225 and that's where we utilize the university engineers in that same example that we talked about at 10 a.m you walk in and your internet service is down well maybe that happened at two in the morning and that's also already been isolated and recognized by the university engineers and they're already working on mitigating that issue they're already talking to their service providers to try to isolate and figure out what happened so that they can get you a resolution it's out of your hands you don't have to worry about that aspect of it the SIPA content filtering we encourage it for obvious reasons but it is not required the, the primary difference that you're going to see because your e-rate or your, your Ethernet transport service, which is the cost of that circuit into your building. Tom would have utilized a pipe and water method. I mean, think about it, it's the actual wires coming into your building. You're paying for that. But the e the actual internet service is that, on the previous slide, it was that eight, eight cents to 24 cents per megabit. That's where we're gonna get the SIPA, the SIPA content filtering. If you're not filtering your internet, you would pay that higher rate of 24 cents. If you are, then it goes down to that eight, but we can separate those out and we can still file for E-rate on the transportation or on the transport services for E-rate. So it is a benefit because of the way that we build that. Another, another pro that we have is that we do have access to a certain number of Zoom licenses as part of an enterprise contract that was initiated by ESU 16. So if you are utilizing or would like to utilize zoom licenses especially the professional level we can help get that service to you we also have a connection because this is technically a research and education network we do have that connection with internet too which is a consortium of internet of research and education networks which gets you access to it there can be digital education um, field trips available you have access to content that you might not otherwise have access to that is another benefit because part of that also because of that $56 participation fee that helps provide what we call DDoS protection, which is a distributed denial of service attack, which is where you sometimes see servers go down. You know, Amazon went down for a couple of days because there was a DDoS attack. These are becoming more prevalent in our day-to-day -day lifestyles, especially as internet and technology is kind of paving the way of the future. So part of our service is providing a 40, 40 gig DDoS protection service is a part of our backbone. Another cost that goes, that's another piece of what that $56 a month pays for. Um, the con again is that we are potentially a little bit more expensive, but there's, a, there's several services that are bundled in and it's less work in the end for you as the library. One thing I didn't get on this, on this slideshow in time is Network Nebraska is also affiliated with Edurome. 
maybe you haven't heard of that. It is a part of the Internet 2 Consortium. And what that basically does is if you are an edge room provider, which they can help you get it set up, but it takes a portion of your Wi-Fi and you dedicate it to edge room. So if you have a local school that, that is participating in edge room and a student comes into your library with his school enabled device, he walks in and he automatically connects to that edge room Wi-Fi. That is a part of the Network Nebraska package. There are additional things you would have to sign up for, people you would need to talk to, but once it's set up, it would be a seamless process for you. And that's only available to Network Nebraska participants right now. And since you did mention that, that reminded me, Becca, um, for those of you that are aware, we did a webinar about that last September. Very um, cool. 2021, so uh, last year, um, on Encompass Live, our weekly webinar show, uh, we had, um, we're going to see here, yeah, staff from University of Nebraska, um, mm -hmm. and Department of Education, everything talking about that. Um, so the recording of that session is on our, in our Encompass Live archives. So if you just go there and search EduRoam, E-D-U-R-O-A. Um, you'll find it and you can watch the recording explaining about how all more detail about how that's working. And the really neat thing is that with the gear funds that were that were um, approved by the governor that went into a lot of the equipment that the schools would need to utilize Edgerome. And so at this point right now, I believe we're sitting close to 64 percent public school participation in Edgerome, which is nice. great. Yeah, that is good. All right. Okay, so this is where we come down to maybe the drier portion of the conversation where we're just talking about timelines. Um, so as of right now, what we would need you to do, or what, if you're going to handle this on your own, or if you're going to embark on this journey as a local, as a local library, um, you just need to start thinking about the bandwidth increments. Typically, a good place to start because it does need to be at least 100 megabits per second, 100 megabits, 200 megabits, 300 megabits, up to five if you want to it gives you a little bit of room for growth for hopefully if you get this into your library and it starts to grow you have that wiggle room if if the demand keeps increasing so it, it's that scalable aspect of it um, you would need to research and draft the key narrative for the form 470 i believe that the uh the nebraska library commission has kind of a general document that you can you can fill in, you can cut and paste your specific information into that. Yeah, so they have into that, that just a little bit. Yep. 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 Crystal will, I'm sure she'll give you the, the down low on that. Um, be ready to post your form 470. You can do that now, but you'll want to do it on or before November 1st because there are a certain number of days you have to have that posted. And if you're going to be working with the Public Service Commission, they want that information, as you can see, by about, I think, December 15th. For Network Nebraska, really, we just need to know, again, that same piece of information, the speeds you want to look at, who the contact who the contact person will be, and then demographic information about the library, where is it located, such information like that. Our contracts are for 48 months, so they are for a full four years. All of our contracts tend to do the four single year extensions, so they could be four up to eight. Um, we are it says we will have the, the RFP out and posted before on or before 10-1. I have some residual pieces of information I'm waiting for. I really want to get that state purchasing tomorrow. That's my goal. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's no obligation to purchase. You don't need to decide today if you want to utilize Network Nebraska or if you want to do this on your own. But you do need to at least decide if you're going to consider it in the very near future so that we can get you onto the state RFP and we can move forward with our contract. Um, and then outside of that, it's the state contract will be with us. Another benefit of that is that if there are contract disputes, you have the, the, the power or the authority of our legal team standing behind you, which is also another benefit. Outside of that, the Network Nebraska website is below. I believe my contact information will be at the end of the slideshow. Feel free to reach out for any questions. Yep, it is. Yep. Um, and I just want to mention here too the dates that we're looking at over there on the left side about posting by the November 1st and contract by December 15th. Those are like our recommended dates. They're not like you won't see them anywhere as it. Um, official hard and fast deadline. So you don't see that posted anywhere. This is our recommendation for if you want to get things going. Uh, I believe 
the Public Service Commission's deadline for submitting their application is usually just at the end of the year, December 31st. Is that still what they're working with, Holly? I think that, or they're very accommodating at this point. So, And that's what I wanted to add, add to. We've yeah. actually had libraries who have gone, done it later than that, and, and right. it's okay. Um, right. We have these deadlines, but there is um, there is some wiggle room put into this is the process, and we've had some that have done it. Not even in because this is the third year of this um, of funding being available, and we've had libraries in previous years where they didn't even get their forms done until into the next year, so into like the January mm -hmm. timeframe. And we just reach out to the and give them a little heads up, saying, "Hey, we've got one coming in," and they're like, "Okay, we got our eyes open for it." Um, they're willing to work with us. They've got this money that they want to give out, so they're willing to do <laughs> whatever it takes just to make sure they get it to the libraries. So, and that's up to 10% um, of your uh, match, and so that's a you know it's a significant match for you. And I mean, you, I the one thing I am a little concerned about now is how busy they are. Um, they may not be as excited about you know, helping out, but they're very, they're, they're very connected with the library commission as far as helping us out. So should be no problem. Yeah. Well, this, um, um, I'm glad that this is in here. Um, uh, what this is, is the timeline for uh, the special construction. The E-rate works on a uh, fiscal year which begins July 1 and ends June 31 and so this is just an example of the timeline for uh, using uh, working with a library application on the bottom and Network Nebraska on the top and again you there's some flexibility in some of this the deadlines from USAC um, are are hard deadlines but this is kind of the flow of activity that goes on throughout the year um, related to a special construction project. And I'll mention, this is probably a good point to mention too, that um, don't try and, you don't have to try and write all this down. <laughs> we will be providing you with the slides afterwards when the recording is very full for this session. So right. you'll have access to all of this later. And I even have this on a, on a, a just a regular piece of paper that can be posted somewhere if you need it. <laughs> so I think that's all. So I think we move forward. We're now. I think we're we're basically um, the there there is a 470 RF um, RFP associated with Network Nebraska, and I don't know how many pages long it is. Um, do you know uh, your contract that you work with? Uh, well, we have three pieces, like three documents, right? So we have our our our. Um, Kind of our master agreement that all of the vendors who are available right. to bid have to sign and I, that's probably 23 pages and then we have our specific rfp document which is at this point i believe we're sitting about 17 pages right. and then we have our appendices that list out because you know we're not just building the special or uh, bidding out for the special yeah, you have other things all. yeah right yeah, we have schools and municipalities so, um, but special construction are spe is specific to those E-rate eligible entities like library schools, issues. Mm -hmm. um, so we have those documents and those, I wanna say right now our special construction appendices is like 30 circuits mm -hmm. um, right now. And then the, the school one, the appendix A is sitting at about 41. So those right. are less pages and more just like lines. Right, on, yeah. On just spreadsheet. <laughs> Right. Well, but it's just a lengthy think, document. Right. Exactly. Well, but so anyway, what we have um, with the Nebraska Library Commission two years ago, we started with the RFP that was generated, kind of put together with um, a lot of advice and even some examples uh, from other uh, libraries that had uh, worked with special construction, and we came up with this template for our Nebraska public libraries to use. Mm -hmm. And um, we have four, um, and Krista is going to go uh, on and talk about this if you want mm -hmm. to, yeah. Yeah, this is just something to, that I popped in here. This is something we'd mentioned yes. previously in right. some sessions. Um, when you are working on this project, this special construction, 
um, you're going to have to work with other people, not just the library. Um, it's a major construction, it could be a major construction project, I'm talking about digging, digging trenches, laying lines across your community, across your city. Um, so in addition to the RFP that we're helping you put together here, you're going to want to reach out to s people in your community, um, in your uh, government, your municipality, the mayor, the city administrator, whoever it is you're supposed to reach out to when something major like this may be going on to make sure you're following their rules as well. Um, and so, like I said, city administrator, the mayor, uh, would the city attorney be in, you know, know some of the rules. Uh, it would depend on your community who you'd need to make sure you contact to say, hey, this is an op opportunity we have. What do I need to know from all you people to Make sure it's included in what we're doing when we're reaching out and starting to work on this. So just talking a little bit about the RFP here, and we are going to be short on time. I'm thinking I the, the only bullet I really need to say here is the second one, that basically it's required um, for, um, strongly recommended for E-rate program to comply with E-rate. Um, state and then your state and local bidding and so we just find that it's easier to work with an RFP because that way you're comparing everything um, in a standard mode um, it's a pretty complex project and so especially if you're a library director who isn't familiar with working with this type of an activity and I, you know from my experience working with the libraries the last two years they aren't um, there's some comfort in even though you may not know what everything says in the RFP, you know you have a standardized response that comes in. And the reason for using it of two is, of course, when we're talking about this bidding process that you need to be engaged in also once you receive your uh, responses, uh, you want to be able to compare uh, things that um, uh, together and accurately um, and this, as, as they are the same type of uh, responses. And this here, for me, this is just, I wanted to show, this is just a template. So the RFP that we do with the libraries, it's just, it's 25 pages long. And a lot of it is just fill in the information related to your library, your address, your contact people. The biggest thing here, I have this on the front of the, uh, this is the front page of the RFP is that probably the most technical thing you have to do is insert either a graphic, and it's optional, a graphic or a picture of your library or something on the front page. Uh, beyond that, <laughs> what was that? Make it personal. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's that's the point. But beyond that, um, I as you go through, I have things that you need to uh, uh, change highlighted uh, in red, and then also, here's an example of a page, you know, the library name is on it five times. And so, um, and it's a very important piece of paper, but if you could just go in and do your uh, find and replace, that's great. One thing I do want to mention at the very bottom, when it has this little in red and it's on all the pages that's in red is that the bidder um, has read and agreed to comply. Um, what happens is with the RFP, sometimes when a company returns a bid, they don't uh, really go back and look at the RFP, except, for, I mean, they answer all the questions, but they have their own template that they want to respond in. I think it's really important to understand that even if they don't do anything else with that RFP, they'll sign the, the master page on the back, but they need to check these uh, these particular little items off or initial them, because otherwise mm -hmm. um, we don't know if, if they're willing to comply, and that's important also. So we can I think what's good about this screenshot here that you did, Holly, that I really like is, is I know the whole th the phrase RFP and that concept is the part that I think scares a lot of the libraries. I don't know about that. I don't know how to do one. I don't even know where to start. As you can see from here, we've got a template and most of the wording in, the, in it is the same for everybody and you just have to change those one spots that are read. So all this is pre-written for you, most mm -hmm. of, the, of the document, and then you just put in you know, yeah. most of it is already is 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 already there. You only have to put in a uh, very little bit, so it's not really as scary as you might think. <laughs> right, you don't have to initiate and come up with it on your own and and cover all possibilities. And and frankly, it took me at least a, a year before I was reading through some parts of it that I even understood what it was all about because it's 
you know that the the fiber is coming to your library, but it comes from somewhere, and the, and all of that part of it, you know, the you want to be sure that you're protecting roads, ditches, you know, things return to the way they should be. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's really what it's all it's all about. So it's all in there for you. Yep. All right. So this is me. Um, so this is um, the special construction here that we're doing. This is part of E-Rate, the E-Rate program. And anyone who wants to apply for this, if you're going doing it yourself, some of this is the things that, as Becca said, that the, if you're going through Network Nebraska, they would do for you. But doing it yourself, you, um, you anybody applying has to go through the E-Rate steps. And this is the E-Rate forms here. Um, and I'll tell you right now, I'm going to do a very quick, high-level overview of this process. Um, there are full E-rate workshops coming up in later in October from um, USAC themselves and in November from me. I've got a full three hour long workshop that I do um, and the dates and everything for signing up for that is the, at the end of this presentation. So um, for the step by step of how to do a whole form, that would be the training to attend or look at. Um, if you do want to do it before I am holding my trainings later in November, that's okay. I will also walk you through it, handhold you through it um, ahead of time. You don't have to wait for the training. But just letting you know this is going to be a high points of these forms and what you need to do. Uh, register for those workshops to get the full in-depth explanation. So uh, we start with the first form in, um, oh, all of, this, all of these forms are done online through the USAC's E-Rate Productivity Center. Um, this is a place where you have everything you need to do, uh, one-stop shopping for the E-Rate program. All your forms that you submit, um, any questions that USAC may ask of you, submitting, uploading documentation, answering questions, checking on the status of your form, seeing where things are, um, all of that is done through the E-Rate Productivity Center, their EPIC system. Um, it is accessed through the uh, Universal Service website. Uh, there's two different links there. They both say sign in. They go to the same place. Don't ask me why they both go on there. But that's this is a screenshot from this morning. So <laughs> this is what the page, the main page, looks like right now. Um, and when you get logged in, all of your forms um, are at the top, um, the upper right there. You'll see some of the ones that I had listed. Form 470 is the first one that you submit, where you say, "I want to get some services. I'm looking for to have this." Um, um, this provided to me, that being the fiber special construction, um, the internet service, um, equipment I want to buy, whatever. And this is just, you know, you start it, funding year 2023 is what we're looking at because we're talking about this starting up next year. Um, you do, um, as you get farther along into the form, as uh, I mentioned, this is where you do um, submit that RFP. So you're going to have to have your RFP ready first. Um, so work on it with Holly on getting that template and getting that all filled out for you with your library's info in it. Then go and do your 470 and upload that RFP. When you get to this point in the form, it'll say, is there one? You say yes, and you just click and drag or drop it, um, the file, um, search for the file there, and you just upload that document along with your 470, and they've got all the details that they need about your project. Um, after you have submitted the 470, you will get notification that it's been done, um, and it gives you the allowable contract date. This is an important date, and we're going to get a lot more detail about this. Um, 28 days, or we recommend the 35 days that we'll get to, <laughs> um, that you have to allow companies, uh, service providers to reach out to you and send you quotes and let you know what they may be able to offer you. Um, oh, here, here's the, did you want to talk about this here, Holly, about the? Um, let's see if there's any, yeah, this is basically what she's alluding to. It's that the fact that if the, within 28 days, um, it's possible that you, you would, well, part of this is that there's an addendum. If you get a, a contacted by somebody who's bidding on this and wants to put a bid in and they have a question it, and it changes the scope of the project, then you need to um, basically say, okay, we have to change the scope of the project. And if you do do that, then you have to start all over again. And so you have to um, you have to eliminate those number of days that you've been working through this. You can see already our time is tight. So what we what we recommend is that you go to a 35 day period when you put in your dates as far as when the deadline is for submission for you uh, people to bid on your project because then you have a full 28 days that's available 
And then the first five days of that, well, yeah, 35 days, but the first five days are times when people, uh, the, the bidders can come in and say, ask a question of you. Now you have a responsibility and generally those people come and talk to me, the library director or whomever's in charge of your, um, your um, RFP will talk to me. But th if there's a question that comes in, you need to publicly let everybody know the question and the response within two days. So that's why we've added, gone from 28 to 35. We have five extra days for questions and then that's the deadline, no more questions after that. And then we add those two days because the person who they're directing it to, say it's the library director, she can or he can then have two days to respond and put it out publicly. And then we start 28 days. Otherwise we, you may find yourself having to- it resets yeah. the clock. Yeah, yeah, it resets the clock. And so it's really important to do that because what you end up is on the other end, you're you can't make the deadline. So right. with it, as it says here, the FCC rules after year 470, you've got to wait a minimum of 28 days before you can go to the second step in the process, which is telling e rate USAC who you've picked as your provider. You've got to give at least those 28 days. We're recommending to do these extra days so you have that question and answer um, in case anything makes a major change. And I've had it. I've had it happen the first year that we did special construction. We had several questions that were um, um, offered, um, so it would have um, been a problem for us. So mm -hmm. I, I definitely believe this is a, an important piece to do. Uh, I guess go forward. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and this is in the RFP. There is a section in there about when these things will happen. So you will. And, and this is what. And, and I guess I didn't realize we'd move forward, but. Um, mm -hmm. I guess what I'd like to say about this is this this piece is something that almost every library that's um, submitted their own RFP um, has come and shown it to me. And if they haven't, they come into some kind of trouble. You can see um, you have to have your dates and times right. And I believe that when the evaluators are looking um, at the, uh, the RFP, when it gets back to um, the USAC of the evaluations, if they're wrong, then they target this type of information. So as you can see in here, really the big one is for the, the release, and then you want to have your day of questioning correct, and then you want to be sure that we, and I take care of this um, at the commission of the public site where we will post anything that comes to the library from a potential bidder, uh, the answer of the question. And then that will go, um, that will be um, available for anybody else who is thinking about bidding to, to take a look at, and they will know about that also. And then the, the deadline itself, as far as the opening of the the actual bids, we we like to say, and I know some libraries don't do this, but don't opening any of them until you've actually are on the have passed the the uh, deadline, and it would be great if you had a time and a date stamp on what you receive. You'll see in the RFP we don't allow for fax or for emails to be delivered, um, uh, come electronic forms of delivery for uh, the bidders. And that's one reason if you do get something like that, you basically have to disregard it, but that's written in the RFP so they should know. And then um, the at that point, when you open it, these next items can happen very quickly as far as if you get a, you have a team of reviewers, often it's the library director, the library board president, and um, some of the libraries have worked with a technology teacher to do this with, or it could be um, somebody who's a, um, like the local government to do it. So anyway, you work through all of those and then you're able to uh, award a contract. So, um, and then, uh, it goes on. So if I think I know the time is short. <laughs> so for bid evaluations, um, there's you need to have some type of a rubric because even if you only receive one bid, you might, um, as um, Becca was saying, you may have multiple uh, speeds that you're, uh, you've asked for some type of um, a response from. And so you wanna be able to compare those. Uh, but uh, I think I've had up to four 
bids return for a library, but oftentimes your bid evaluation is just one, but still uh, you would be asking for, I recommend at least three different speeds. And so you put a rubric together um, and then here is the evaluation sheet that you use to um, with your review group. And the review group gets together. You have a sheet for every one of them. They each fill it out separately. Then they come, you all come together and have a discussion. But one of the things you need to know that the the, the largest weight is put on the actual cost um, for the fiber. That That is the most important um, weight for the decision making. One mm -hmm. thing I do want to say is sometimes you get out of town um, bids that come in or out of state bids. And there's two things. They have to be in good standing with the Nebraska Public Service Commission. So you need to be able to find out that. And um, sometimes you don't want somebody to be working with somebody that's out of town. And there is, there are some nuances to evaluations that will help you. It might be something like you'll give a uh, 15% or a weight of 15% for uh, a provider who does a survey through your library. So there is some tweaking that can occur. There will be some type of, uh, I do have an example of this in the RFP, so your provider will also see this so they are aware of what their evaluation will be. Part so, of the, to interject with just Network Nebraska, I know we kind of passed that, but in that lengthy 17 page RFP document that we have, we do have some guidelines in there that, um, you know, we have requirements where they have to be either within Nebraska or with along the contiguous border, because uh, we do have a vendor right now that that was from out of state or out of region that is has been problematic. And so we we tend to tweak our RFPs to kind of eliminate those as well, because we are a lowest and final offer evaluation process only. So. That's and, yeah, I agree. That's that's uh, much easier. So the, basically, that's the evaluation sheet. You sit together, you make a decision, and then um, you know, according to the cal the calendar of the sequence of events, then you you let the uh, awardee know yes, you are the awardee, but there's no signature of a contract or anything at that point. And as a courtesy, you may also want to let uh, the other um, Vend uh, vendors that have applied and let them know that they, they were not successful in their bid. And I didn't want to go too deep into this because we're way into the process, but be sure that you, uh, you never sign a contract um, <laughs> until you have at least uh, these two paragraphs included in the, uh, the contract. And what I've done with libraries who've done their own RFP, um, they either provide the contract to me or I speak with whomever the agent is for the, um, the, the vendor and give them this information to be included into the contract if they, if they need to edit it. Because you need to be sure that you have the funding that's necessary for you to be able to um, to pay for this because um, and and most of these businesses now after two years of doing this these uh, ISPs are aware of this they don't yeah. like it but you you do it <laughs> yeah because even though we're, even though we're talking about how great E-rate is and how all this funding is out there it's not a guarantee um, there's the you know, applying isn't mean you definitely will get the money although 99.9% .9 of our libraries do. Um, so this just covers you. And we have had some people that are concerned, libraries that say, well, I have to sign this contract before I can go on with the process, but what if I don't know if I'm going to be getting the money? That's okay. You put in this clause, and um, if the E-rate doesn't go through or you choose not to continue with it, that's okay. You are not um, um, you know, not you know, like stuck with this company doing this work because you put this in here in your contract. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this um, this is uh, the part that we were talking about earlier with the the ten per, up to ten percent match, which um, became part one of the reasons why I think that the libraries have begun to put fiber into <laughs> if if they are self if they're doing it themselves or working with Network Nebraska, they're more interested in it because uh, this um, Nebraska um, Public Service Commission offers the up up to ten percent match, 
And it's a very simple form to fill out. Um, it would take you maybe five minutes to complete and um, submit uh, to the, once you've selected who you're going to be working with, because there are some questions that relate to, you know, the pricing, et cetera, you could submit this to, um, and I have the email address, it may change at this point, but uh, with the Public Service Commission and they evaluate it, I've, they've never denied any uh, request at this point, and I don't think that they will. Um, so that would be what you need to do. And then once you have that uh, form completed and, and you get a receipt letter from the uh, Public Service Commission saying, yes, we're going to get, award you this amount of money, that um, along with your uh, contract goes uh, back, uh, you talk to Krista or you work through a, a Form 471 and you submit to, um, through Epic to um, for your E-rate and then mm -hmm. there's, you go on. Yeah, because you've got all the stuff about. Yep, yep, that's what's coming up next, yep. Um, yeah, so this is the uh, link to submit um, to the Public Service Commission. Um, that's just a screenshot of it. And as it's all online, as Sally said, quick and easy, whoops. <laughs> um, there you go. Uh, you do need to include your a copy of your 470. That can be printed out as a PDF from um, your Epic account. I can help you do that. And the bid response the um, that you have um, picked, who you've picked to be your service provider. You include both of those, and that's what uh, Holly's talking about emailing when you do this application. Um, Sometime, hopefully, in January, uh, the commission, you'll get, a, you'll get an email from them saying, here's your award letter, and you need that letter in order to do the next step in the E-rate process, the 471. So um, your first step is to do your 470. Second step, pick your provider and sign your contract. Submit that information to the Public Service Commission. Then wait for them to say, yes, you've been awarded that their funding. Then go on to the next E-rate step, which is the 471. Um, oh, and this is what I was just talking about. Yeah, so you have to wait that 28 days slash 35 days to um, before you can do this step. Uh, have your contract done and signed. Get that award letter if you're doing the special construction. And the 471 can also only be done during the specific application filing window. This is important. You can't just do it whenever you want to. It actually doesn't isn't even available until this window opens up. Uh, that's usually sometime mid-January to mid-March. Uh, the dates are usually announced by the end, near the end of December. So um, even if you get through all of this up to this step and you've got your award letter and you're ready to go, you've got to wait for USAC to open up the window. Uh, when those dates are announced, I will put an announcement out and let everyone know when it's coming. Um, you do get an email directly from E-Rate letting you know when you've reached that 28 days, that allowable contract date. This is great. An email is sent right to you and a notice is sent to you in your Epic account. So if you can't remember when was that date, did it come yet, did it reach it yet, they will proactively um, ping you and send you a message saying, hey, it's time to go on. You, you can go on to the next step now um, if you want to. Um, your 471 is also done in Epic right up there at the top of the page, right next to the link for the 470. Um, after you have submitted the 471, then it goes to being reviewed by USAC. Um, their Program Integrity Assurance Department handles that. They will um, double check everything on the form, make sure it's all correct. They will possibly, probably have questions for you. Um, you'll receive notifications from PIA reviewer. Um, I can help you answer any of those questions. Uh, so if you do receive something, you're not sure what the heck it says, um, I can translate for you and help you answer their questions. And that oftentimes has to be done. Um, after they're done with their review, and if they are, um, they will then uh, send you a fu your funding commitment decision letter, FCDL. Um, this is where it lets you know if you've been funded or not. Most likely you get funded, for example, this year for 2022, all of the libraries, all of the libraries in Nebraska that applied were funded. Nobody was denied. Uh, so you'll get an actual email also sent directly to you saying funding commitment decision letter available. And it will be an attachment, a PDF attachment, where you can just click on that and open up and see if you've been awarded and how much. Um, you might get more than one of these depending on how many applications you've done. Um, things you can do multiple 470s and 471s, uh, depending on how you're organizing things. Um, but just pay attention to what is said in that letter. 
as soon as you receive this funding commitment decision letter, you immediately go on to the next form, your 486. Um, your, um, this is where many libraries lose it in the process. <laughs> they get this letter and they say, yay, we've been funded. I'm, I'm, I'm good, I did it. No, this is just USAC saying, we have set aside this money for you. You still have to say you want the money. Um, so you have to send a form back to them, 486, also in your Epic account, um, saying, yes, I want to receive it. Um, and everything you need for this form is easy. You don't need to attach anything spe special. You're not uploading any documents to this, like with the previous ones with the um, award letter and uh, your RFP. You, it's just all included in there in, this, in the system, and it autofills. You just got to kind of click through it and say, yes, 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 this is all correct. Um, it's also at the top of the page, 486, same place where you found your other two forms. Um, and um, that is immediately sent in. And something I didn't mention, I was talking about attaching. Um, when you do your 471, and I did say that you do have to include that award letter that we placed to upload that into there. So the 470 and the 471, you do attach extra documents to. The 486, you just click through and submit it. Um, to, right would at, you have to would you have to attach the signed contract also? The contract would go with the 471. Right. Yes. Mm, yes. Okay. Sorry. Yep. The contract. Yep. There'll be a place in there that will say what's the con where's the contract. Yep. Yep. The 471 has the contract and the award letter. And there's special questions that ask you about that. It kind of prompts you through it. It's really slick now because they've got this is this special funding special construction funding is something set up by USAC for E-rate and then the special questions that actually ask you and prompt you to do that. That's that's nice. The only other thing I was thinking about is um, once you receive that funding letter, you can you should contact your award uh, bidder and uh, let them know to begin the process um, of building. You know, that's that's what they need to to know is when to start. And I think that there's some type of a work order that they put together. But that happens before the 486. Um, well, no, the 486 is when you submit the 486, you, the, they can't do anything until you do the 486. Um, that has that is what tells when you submit that um, a notice it, you know, it oh, goes to the vendor that, and a notice is automatically sent from E-rate to whoever your service provider was the, that yeah. did, letting them know you did submit that. And then they know they can start working um, on. Um, Think what's what's their next step for starting the con the construction? I know, but I, it, se it seems to me it's kind of weird. But I thought I had had some libraries contact me when they received they hadn't they had notification they hadn't but uh, uh, submitted their 486 yet. There was construction going on, but there are some. I, yeah, we have had that happen. Yeah, I did have a library said yet yeah, that they I forget which one it was where yeah the the company just oh. started doing construction and well, the library. But I don't know if this is actually happening yet. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> um, and they will, you know, they have their schedule they need to be on and they can start this, they can start the construction anytime after January 1st of the year that you're starting to get the mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. um, and then they'll be, and then the funding, the discounts can be applied for any construction done after January 1st when the service is going to start that July. Uh, but if they need to start working on something before this is all processed through, that's on them. Um, if there's no, if, if even if the funding commit decision letter hasn't come through yet, um, you know, you have that in the contract that that phrase about this will not go through unless we are approved and it go and we do all of the E-rate. Well, we do not have to honor this contract. So that covers you too when they if they decide you know we got to start construction in February. Um, we don't care that you haven't done all these forms yet. Um, this is just our schedule for doing work and you, you, it's okay. If any of this falls through, you choose not to follow through with all the E-rate stuff, you're not responsible and liable for anything because you've put that in the contract first. Yeah, the same company who, um, actually Becky Henkel from Baird Public Library is on uh, our guest library uh, person today to talk to you, or one of the first year of special construction. She had that happen with the company and also Kimball public library but it's the same company they just build no matter what so well, and they built to the yeah. oh becky's here <laughs> they built they built to the building <laughs> and yeah. uh, and the, there's a little i think there's a little bit of anxiety she can probably share that when <laughs> she speaks <laughs> yeah, I would, because i'm like uh they're in town they're they're digging up the road 
but uh, I have a, you know, but it all worked out good. It all worked out in the end, yeah. 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 All right. So um, after you do get that 46 in and let USAC know, yes, we want the money, then you have to, the last step you have to do is figure out, decide how you want to get your discounts. Um, you have an option of either having um, your bills automatically discounted by the service provider. Um, if that's the case, you they submit the last form to um, USAC. Uh, for e-rate. Uh, we highly recommend this. It's much easier that your bills just come discounted and you don't have to worry about anything else. But if they can't or it's just not something that works, you can do, you would do the um, bare form, build entity applicant reimbursement form, which is where you pay the bills in full and then USAC reimburses you. Um, so you would do this form if that's going to be the case. Um, it's a direct reimbursement from USAC. They do a direct deposit into the library's bank account, and there's just one extra form that you submit once, um, the 498, to give them that banking account information, similar to doing your direct deposit for any of your um, paychecks and, and uh, so those kind of things. Um, and then that would be um, the end of doing the e-rate process. Then hopefully your fiber is installed and it works. So for this step here, um, you might, your last form in the e-rate process of the library may be the 46, <clears throat> may be the 46 if your service provider is going to discount your bills. You step at the 46, they do this part. If they aren't discounting it, you do this part, then you're done. So actually, it uh, looks like uh, Becky is up next. So mm -hmm. thanks for coming, Becky. And um, we have Becky Hinkle from the Baird Public Library, who um, was in the first year of our special construction um, um, uh, uh, applications and successfully had a uh, fiber brought to her library. And she also in included with doing that because sometimes your infrastructure in your library you can receive the fiber at the wall or the door as you might say but it may not uh, be um, able to run at that speed in the interior of your library due to your network equipment and other kinds of issues related to the network she also applied for a category two e-rate category two to uh, help uh, to uh, be able to uh, utilize her speed that she had requested from her provider. So Becky, I'm gonna let you just chat a little bit. Well, we are. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't have any of the the equipment that was gonna to work because. So I got some help from um, Service Unit 13, and he came down and checked everything out for me and let me know what exactly I would need and and um, so we worked together and you then you have to do a whole nother um, RFP for that so it was good to have somebody to double check all that with as well um, the only thing different is he also um, said that he would install my stuff on the inside for me as well so I didn't have to do a bid for um, having the work done inside, but I guess you can do that. The good thing about having someone else do it, you're not on their time frame because when they're doing it out of the kindness of their heart, you know, it's like a little different than somebody that's getting paid to do the work. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So, yeah. Um, Am I missing anything there? It made a world of difference um, having yeah. the fiber to to the library. I remember when we tried to um, do our summer reading program through uh, Zoom on sharing it with kids, you know, at at home and stuff. And they were doing their summer school that year that way as well. Half the time, you know, you'd be talking away, and all of a sudden. You didn't know, but you'd lost internet. So there you sat. And you'd have to try again. So then you'd be going again, and then you'd lose it again. Or they'd say, I can't hear you. And oh, it was horrible. And um, after we got the, the fiber to town, we're the only one in Baird that has the fiber. And so I have a lot of people that will come in um, just to do their get in their email or send something out because it's uh, so much more 
dependable to them than even their home internet that they have, which is is pretty slow here in Baird. Um, there's times when the bank doesn't have internet, the convenience store, or even when our city office, it goes out, but yet the library still has it because we have the fiber. So you have another provider there in town, but this, so you're using a different provider for your internet. Yes, we went with um, somebody that actually can only um, provide to um, government and government places or so they can't offer it to the residents. Yeah, it's a so middle mile. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, and they actually came under the railroad track down the main street, you know, through the alley. They did all that. Um, it, uh, surprisingly, everybody was real um, good to work with, I think. And I believe our school, they were locked into some kind of a contract, but I think they're going to try to um, maybe get the same that we have. Optic, so, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Well, the other thing she's not admitting to is that um, sh she told me when we I was talking to her about, you know, having oh. an open house and she said, uh, she said, well, I said, well, you could even get the governor to come. And she goes, I'm going to get the governor to come. And she literally got the governor to come, landed his helicopter out there and his, you know, his aide yeah. came in and, uh, and all the school kids came down from school and uh, sat in the library. It was packed and he was up there putting on a bit of a show and um it was really something um, no don't don't tell becky you can't do something i guess is really what I have yeah. to say. <laughs> and i really appreciated her uh being she in fact i have to say uh kimball public library um had been under the impression that the rfp was something that they had to self-initiate and they didn't quite understand it and somehow she was having a conversation is it Amber? Is that, uh, I think it's uh, Eddie. Yeah. yeah. And she was having a conversation and found out, oh my gosh, no, it's it's already done for you. And uh, so there she fired it off and worked with Krista and uh, got in under the wire to get uh, get right. her fiber to Kimball Public Library. So also a word of mouth or so. I'm really appreciative and thanks for coming today. I don't know if there are any questions or anything anybody has, audience or whatever. Seems very overwhelming all at once, and um, being a small library, I think there's oh I'd say 90% of my time here I'm alone, as far as a sole worker, except for in the summer, you know I usually get like an intern, and um, thanks to Krista and the library commission, um, so. But it's worth it. It really is worth it. And once you get started, you just want to keep going so that because you can just you can almost feel or taste what's going to come with it. And I don't regret it one minute. It was a lot of work, but it was so worth it. I think what I think to me when I when I walk into a library that's got fiber, I, I feel energy. You know, it's not a uh, uh, signs hanging over uh, desktop computers doesn't work doesn't work oh no we we don't have enough speed okay. to do that you know there's no it's just go forward which is um, you know the reliability uh, of uh, your service is and fast service we started having teachers come down and do um, training here at the library just so that they could use you know, the, the high speed, and we have a, a TV, you know, that has the, the camera for right. Zoom and stuff. And it's nice to know that we can help out, you know, as much as we can. Okay. Yeah. So does so, anybody have any questions? If you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask. If not, we can, that's okay. Yep. All right. Well, thank you very much, Becky. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Kimball, that was the one I was trying to remember earlier that when we were talking about the, the deadlines that we have that um, we can work with you and the Public Service Commission can work with you if you're worried that you're not up to those deadlines, able to keep up with those deadlines just yet. Um, 
that was like in like a January, February of the year when if we got things done and just, you know, connected with the Public Service Commission, they said, yes, get the application to us. We'll get the letter out to them. Boom, boom, boom. And they got it. Yeah. And they're very happy. Uh, yes. So that's great. Okay. Well, thank you again, Becky, for being stellar yeah. and being here. <laughs> Take care. Thank you guys for all you do for us. So. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, so this is just uh, kind of giving you the wide variety of pricing that happens with uh, with fiber um, installations. And um, Library Eight, I did not know the distance. Um, I never saw the con uh, the reply from uh, the RFP to know that, but I did know the pricing of it. So. Um, if you look at this and in, in some cases you know i i don't know any library i don't feel like there's any library that's spent over i don't know three or four thousand dollars paying themselves maybe there were some that were closer to ten you know but but I, yeah it's amazing mm -hmm. and this is the total cost so yes. you would not be paying this at all this is what um e-rate covered would cover 80, 90, potentially, depending on your 100%, rate, 80 yeah. of the cost. Yeah. If you're at 80% discount or above, you would get this entirely covered. Right. With the extra special, with the extra funding coming from the Public Service Commission. Exactly. So just a highlight of some information. So move forward. So we move on and, and, um, this is this is all about just go to the next slide basically this is just talking about the the money that's out there for and the um, programs that are out there that are available to libraries and to communities um, e-rate category two we're going to be doing a third workshop on that on November the 9th in the afternoon um, as you heard from Becky, uh, basically with the assessment that the um, Ben did at the library, she needed uh, significant uh, pieces of equipment. But again, she used her category two, the discount, and I think that would have been 80% um, for her. I can't remember exactly. It was either 70 or 80. Or, um, and so she had a significant dif discount on even purchasing network equipment to help uh, to uh, bring in that. Yeah, Bayard was the 80% discount, yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and then the second item is the uh, Legislative Bill 388, which is the Nebraska Broadband Bridge, Bridge Grant. And I don't, uh, I think that it's the last um, allocation of funding from the legislature for that. But it's amazing, they had 110 applicants. And so if you're a community um, ev uh, that has even received the, you know, the, the possibility that they're going to be uh, going to be uh, awarded this funding, that would mean if the library is, was within the parameter that is identified as what they're going to connect everything up to, which would be businesses, uh, libraries, and uh, residential, um, that's great, but I've had a couple of cases that I've talked to of community li or for libraries who've said that they were going to be connected to this and they were excited about it and they weren't interested in doing the special construction because of that. And it turned out um, there's uh, quite a bit of competition with uh, providers in the state and um, uh, I guess depending, I don't know a lot about this, but with the Public Service Commission, they ha they get uh, uh, contacted to say by a provider, no, they can't do that because this is our domain and then they have to go at it. And if, if the original one who says it's theirs is able to keep it, then that uh, grant funding, it doesn't go to that community. And there are, like I said, I know of two or three of them, but one of them in particular had a library director there. She was so excited and so was her city administrator. But it, then it came in, the the other um, ISP came in and kind of foiled all that situation. So that tells you the tale that Krista and I were talking about this morning. And Krista can say it because she said it well. The part about, you know, don't um, don't count on something. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's all of these programs available, but n and even with E-Rate, nothing is a guarantee. So it's good to have options, you know, get yourself in line for anything that might be available that could get fiber to the library and get the speed 
faster because you never know what you might think is coming and then suddenly gets you know the rug gets pulled out from under you yeah and so the the last uh, bullet is about nita and this is the funding that's just becoming available and um there's announcements going on in the state of nebraska related to how much funding is going to be available um, but one thing um, in this this uh, headline here, the special construction would fall under the bead grant area, um, I believe. And part of the issue there is actually libraries or anchor institutions, which include libraries, they are the third um, allocation for the funding. Uh, first, it's uh, unserved, which would be under 12 megabits uh, communities, and then that's uh, to 24. Um, I believe, and then from there, uh, 24 megabits uh, is the second allocation of the funding. And then finally, they talk about anchor institutions like libraries. So we we really, even though that's a, a lot of money, that's this is um, the allocation um, uh, for the not for the state, but for the country. It and there is a significant amount coming. It's it still may not make it to libraries. So again, it's the same thing, you know, you, no sure thing. You may be thinking, oh, wow, mm -hmm. this will make it to me now, but mm -hmm. it may not. So that's just uh, some some sources of funding to be thinking about. We still feel like the special construction is a pretty good deal with the help of the Library Commission and uh, Network Nebraska. So. And even as I'm looking through this, I'm thinking about, you know, this is all, a lot of these are about getting broadband to the communities and to, to you. but once it's there having it in your building you need to have the equipment that can run it and that's what that category two that first item is is for for the libraries you can get a discount on purchasing and upgrading all of your in-house the physical equipment that runs your network and your cabling and everything um you're gonna need you know we, we've had this before where a library has done did i and the one I can't remember, I've been doing E-rate for a long time. Um, they got the internet upgraded, but then their physical equipment couldn't handle the new speed. They were paying for the faster speed, but then the equipment was too old to handle that amount of speed. So then the next year they had to go back and say, okay, now we need to upgrade all of our equipment. And now, yay, we can finally use this that we got. Right, this and and that's happened to several libraries. And in fact, yeah. uh, those that are maybe working with their city and their uh, city for the funding and they get their fiber, uh, depending on who's working with them, they may not uh, be utilizing their their full capability because nobody's helping them on the inside with the infrastructure of the library. So, so yeah, I think that you know again on uh, November nine, we in the afternoon we'll be talking about Category two funding. So, and this this is our promotion for that. You know, this these are just some self-reported um, bullets here about uh, what. We, we library um, libraries have reported back in their uh, library survey for um, uh, infrastructure and for uh, technical assistance. And um, Kristen may know more about this, but but the, basically we're in the third year, I believe, of a five-year twenty-five thousand dollars that are available for libraries to uh, access for uh, category two uh, um, uh, eligibility listed. That chunk of money. So it's, yeah. it's not like once this one's done, you can't get it, it'll just start over again with a new five year But period. But it's amazing to me, $25,000 for a, a small rural library is um, wow. is a significant amount if, you know, that uh, could really go far. And join us, so. Yeah. Um, and then as I mentioned earlier, um, E-rate workshops that I'm doing, um, as I said, this was a very quick high level of how E-rate works. Um, I have my regular annual workshops that I do, what's new for 2023, so this will be um, the end, um, second half of November. I've got four different ones scheduled. It's the same workshop each time. You don't have to do four different workshops to learn it all. I'm just repeating it um, to be at various times and dates so everyone can have a chance to um, attend, um, have something they can attend. Uh, so you can go on our Library Commission's training and events calendar and just do a search for E-Rate 2023 and you will find um, all of them. Uh, and you can register for whichever one um, works for you. Um, I'll also mention, which I should have added in here too, because um, as I'm thinking about the, the scheduling and the timing of all this, my workshops are actually in November, but later in October, uh, 
this year, this month, um, USAC has their own workshops that they are doing um, online webinars, um, a series of them. So also, if you look at our Library Commission's E-Rate webpage, uh, you'll find links to their webinars that are happening this month. Um, if you want to, you know, go to some of theirs um, ahead of mine and um, learn more about E-Rate, they've got a uh, six or eight of them on different days. And I think the one thing we didn't mention too is um, that Krista, um, when it comes time to sum, to be submitting these forms, um, she's available. You know, get, send her a shoot her an email, let her know that you're uh, that you need some help doing something um, on in Epic, or want her to work along with you just to make sure it's right. Uh, she will mm -hmm. uh, be happy to do that and does a great job with that. One thing I did, like you said about the the timing for your workshops. Um, it's it's almost getting late for somebody who is working on the special construction to do that. Yeah. So it's good to know that there's another option, or there's the Krista option. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and this it's just my workshops are this every year. I mine are done after. I also attend all of the E-rate one, all of USACs to see if there's anything new I need to know before I then. Mm -hmm also do mine so I have to wait for theirs to be done then I schedule mine so I'm kind of you know I, I don't have a I don't have well, choice <laughs> I, I, I do as quickly as I can like I, I said but um and you know special construction is a whole special thing so this is also as far as the e-rate schedule is as I said you know even that second form the 471 can't even do that until next January in January anyways so this is okay and also for that. category two the category right, two, right. yeah that, yeah so I'm not saying that you know that I understood why you were doing that. I shouldn't have said it in that that way, but but yeah. basically, um, yeah. So I think it's it used important. To be earlier in the year too, and everything is kind of gets delayed. I don't know. <laughs> so okay, well, um, I guess if there aren't any questions, or if there are questions, you can ask. Uh, no, let's see if there are any questions. Yeah, this is our contact info. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, you um, unmute and you can ask. Um, I'll keep an eye on that. Um, otherwise, yes, this is our contact info. You can reach out to any of us, myself, Holly, or Becca, with questions about our particular parts of this. Um, and if you're interested in um, receiving an RFP, you can uh, just email me, or the, the library initiated RFP, and um, I'll get it sent to you. I'd like to have a conversation usually with folks or e through email or on the phone about it but prior to uh, sending sending it and shipping it off to you but just anything else you want to add Becca to at the end here no nope, just time available for questions and let me know as soon as possible if you do want to jump on to our state RFP. yes and, and that's the yeah if you want to get involved in that yeah that's probably your first thing to do right now is reach out to Becca and say yes we'd like to be involved in yours here's what do you need from me so she can get you involved in that then um, reach out to me and Holly about getting involved in the, the library commissions one you can do both of these at the same time have them both going both options and then decide in the end which one you're going to follow through with one or the other or neither yeah we we encourage uh, uh, signing up to have a Network Nebraska option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have take advantage of all your options options out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Looks like we don't have any questions right now. That's okay. Alrighty. All right. Thank you, everybody, and hopefully we'll see you on November 9th at our third workshop in this series. On yeah, let me get back to that. No, yeah, go back. There we go. Sign up for that one next. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.